Welcome to RPI's video on how to calibrate the Adjunct 3 board on the Tuttenauer E-Series Autoclaves. My name is Chris Jacobs, and I'm one of the product engineers, and I will be your host for this video today. To perform the calibration on the E-Series Tuttenauer units, you will need the following tools. Phillips head screwdriver, 9 16 wrench, 7 16 wrench, or a crescent wrench, grounding strap, and a diagnostic smart kit. The Diagnostic Smart Kit, RPI part number TUK108, is designed to assist you with several service tasks, including verifying pressure and temperature sensor values, calibrating the pressure and temperature sensor, as well as verifying voltages for various components on your machine. Some of the components inside the Diagnostic Smart Kit include the test point board, RPI part number TUB109 which enables you to check and monitor all of the test points on the adjunct and ANL T2 boards without having to locate resistor or chip legs. The ribbon cable, RPI part number TUC117, allows you to connect the test point board to your adjunct 3 board. The PT100 simulator, RPI part number TUT114, which is used to simulate the PT100 temperature sensor. The capability of simulating the high and low temperatures makes this a valuable tool for calibrating temperature. The first wire harness, RPI part number TUH111, is used to connect the PT100 simulator to the adjunct 3 board. The second wire harness is also used to connect the PT100 simulator to the adjunct 3 board, but it is used on newer style machines. The third wire harness, the TUH113, is used to connect the PT100 simulator to ANL T2 boards or adjunct 2 boards. Trim pot adjustment tool, RPI part number RPT460, is used to easily, accurately, and safely adjust all types of variable resistors. The max register thermometer, RPI part number RPT113, is used inside the chamber to measure the maximum internal temperature of the chamber. The test pressure gauge, RPI part number TUG110, is used to verify that the digital display matches the mechanical gauge. The gauge has a red maximum indicator needle. The instruction booklet can provide several hints and tips for troubleshooting and calibrating your E-Series Tutton Hour. To get started with calibration, you'll need to remove the screws from the top cover. Let's take a look at some of the main electrical components of the Tuttenauer E-Series autoclaves. Behind your keypad is your display board or pre-digital board, which also contains the microprocessor, which acts as a brain for the unit. And just below that to the left is your clock chip. Moving over to the right inside the cabinet, on the top is your solid state relay for your water pump. Just below that is the solid state relay for your dry pump or air compressor. Moving over to the bottom of the plastic portion is your power switch. Looking straight on at the unit, the very top board is your power supply board which also offers your 5 and 12 volt DC lines that go down to the adjunct 3 board or in some cases an adjunct 2 board. Just below that will be the solid state relay for your heater. And then at the very bottom of the unit you will have your cooling fan. To look at the side of the unit, in between your reservoir and the bracket will be your pressure transducer. And moving down below the water reservoir will be your water pump, available in 120 volts and 220 volts. Just to the right of that will be your air compressor, also available in 120 or 220 volts. And hidden just to the right of that is your fill solenoid. Just to the right of that, on the bracket, is the automatic reset safety thermostat. And just above it 
is the manual reset safety thermostat. Moving up to the side of the reservoir, just off the back of it is the air outlet solenoid valve. To give you a better view, we'll take a look at the back of the unit where we'll show you the air outlet valve. And just to the right of that, underneath some of the coils, you will see the air pump solenoid or air compressor solenoid. Going back to the back bracket, you will see the circuit breaker with two fuse holders on top. Just to the right of that, you will see your exhaust slash vent valve. And over to the right, just underneath the chamber, is the water fill electrode. And finally, moving up to the T on the back of the chamber, you will see your temp sensor or PT100 sensor. Before demonstrating how to install the test pressure gauge, RPI part number TUG110, it is important to look at the two configurations shown to the right and how they differ slightly depending on the model. The configurations may look different, however, the procedure to install the gauge is the same. The gauge is connected with the smaller side connected to the T fitting containing the PT100 sensor, and the other side is connected to the copper line going to the pressure transducer. For the purpose of the following demonstration on how to install the gauge, the EZ9 model will be used. The first part of calibration setup is to grab your test pressure gauge, the TUG110, and install it in the small T in the back of the machine where your temperature sensor is located. As you look at it from the back, you need to disconnect the compression fitting on the left hand side of the machine. Grab your test pressure gauge and install the small end into the T. Screw it down until it's finger tight. Then take the other end, the part of the tubing that is connected to your pressure transducer, and connect it into the other end of the test pressure gauge and again tighten until finger tight. Last part, you want to grab a 9 16 wrench for the test pressure gauge side and a 7 16 wrench for the small fitting and tighten down both sides. Once both sides are tight, just ensure that your test pressure gauge, the red needle, is placed at zero. One of the next things you may want to do for your convenience is remove this front panel. It's not required, but it'll make it easier when calibrating. Small machines like this EZ9 and 2540s only have two screws, one in the top and one in the bottom. For larger machines such as 3870s and 3850s, you'll need to remove three screws, top, bottom, and on the right hand side. For the purposes of this video, we've already removed the screws, so we're just going to take the panel off and set it to the side. You can lean it up against the door so that it doesn't go anywhere. The next thing you want to do to avoid any electrostatic discharge is to place on a grounding strap. The RPS 998 is perfect for this job. Place the wrist connection around your wrist. Take the alligator clip and place it on any metal screw going through the casing. This one in the front is perfect for this job. Next, you want to grab your TUB109, which is your test point board. 
and the TUC117, which is your ribbon cable. And you're going to want to connect the ribbon cable to JP1 on your test point board. Push it down until it clicks both of the tabs in. Then you want to take the other end and connect it to JP14 on the adjunct 3 board. For a closer look, taking the TUC117 cable and connecting it to JP14 on your adjunct 3 board. The next part of the calibration setup is to take the TUT114, which is your PT100 simulator, and connect it to the wire harness TUH111. You want to connect red to red and black to black. Tighten down the fittings until they're snug. You also want to make sure that your TUT114 is placed at the zero degree mark. Next, you're going to reach in behind where your adjunct board is to a small two-pin connector at JP11. This is your temperature sensor. You're just going to disconnect it and place in the same spot the TUH111 harness. Now for a closer look at connecting JP11 to the TUH111 harness. You disconnect your temp sensor, which is the second connection over, and placing in the connector for the PT100 simulator. To begin your calibration procedure, first you're going to need to turn the machine on. You need to let it run through the post test before you actually begin. Next step will be to grab your TUB109 test point board. You want to connect your black lead to test point 25 and your red lead to test point 26. This is important because you're actually looking for a negative voltage. So we're going to connect black lead at test point 25 and red lead at test point 26. You also want to make sure that your TUT114, your PT100 simulator, is set to 32 degrees Fahrenheit or 0 degrees C. Next you want to turn your multimeter to the millivolt DC scale. Then you're going to want to grab your RPT 460, your trim pot tool, to adjust pot 4 on the adjunct 3 board. And here's a closer look at pot 4. It needs to be adjusted to negative 5.1 millivolts. For some of you this may be complicated because that is a trigger point for one of the chips that's on the adjunct 3 board. So if you're getting to 5 or 5.2, that's okay. The next step in the calibration procedure is to take your TUB109 board and move your leads from 25 and 26 to your black lead on test point 1 and your red lead on test point 7. You're going to want to take your TUT114 and turn it all the way over to 273 degrees. 
Then you want to take your multimeter and turn it to volts DC. Grab your RPT 460 and you're going to be adjusting pot 5 on the adjunct 3 board. And here's a closer look at pot 5. You want to adjust pot 5 to 2.385 volts. The next part of the calibration procedure is to do the zero pressure adjustment. To do that, you're going to need to open up the door, hold in your door switch for five seconds while you power the unit on. But while you are here, it's a good idea to grab your RPT113, which is your max register thermometer, and place it on a tray inside the machine. Before you do that, it is important to shake it down so that the thermometer reads 150 degrees. Close the door a little ways. You want to press on the door switch. Turn the unit on. You want to keep holding the door switch for five seconds and then release it. Once you're finished, you should see zero pressure on the display. The last part of the calibration procedure is to take the TUV109 and move only your red lead from test point 7 to test point 4. Next, you can turn your multimeter to either the millivolt DC scale or the volt DC scale depending on your meter but you'll need to see at least three places if you're on the volt DC scale next grab your RPT 460 again and this time you'll be adjusting pot 2 and here's a closer look at pot 2 you need to adjust it to 500 millivolts or as you can see on our meter 0.500 because uh, we are in the volt DC scale again this particular setting may be difficult for you to actually get to 500 millivolts because it is also a trigger point for one of the chips on the adjunct 3 board This completes the calibration procedure. Moving on, you need to make a final check to make sure that the unit is operating to its calibration. To do that, you need to disconnect your TUT114 from JP11. Set it to the side and then reconnect your actual temp sensor for the machine. Once you've reconnected it, you also want to leave your test point board connected. You want to leave your meter leads with the black lead on one and the red lead on four. Then you want to set your meter to volts DC scale. That way, as the machine goes through the cycle, you can see the 500 millivolts raised to 1.5 volts at 30 psi as it should be. The final check will be completed by running an unwrap cycle. If you'd like to run a pack cycle to verify drying is still functioning, then go ahead and do that. But for this test, we'll be running an unwrapped. Before you begin, it's best to open up your door, double check that you have the RPT113 max register thermometer placed inside the chamber on a tray.
Be sure that it is shaken down so that the thermometer reads 150 degrees. You want to close the door, tighten it all the way down until you can hear the door switch click. Once you've heard it click, then also verify that your test pressure gauge, the TUG110, is sitting at zero PSI. Turn the unit on. Wait for it to go through its post test. Once it's completed, you'll see the 500 millivolts that you calibrated to earlier. As you run the test point, test cycle, you'll need to pay attention to a few things. First is at 194 degrees, the air outlet valve in the back of your reservoir will close. This will allow you to build pressure. At that point, you'll begin seeing your meter rise from 500 millivolts to 1.5 volts DC approximately once you reach 30 PSI. If you do not reach the 1.5 millivolts or approximate to that area, you'll need to recalibrate your machine. So we're going to push unwrapped and then we're going to push start. So nearing the end of your cycle, you should see the 1.5 volts. We're pretty close on this machine. Um, your display is showing about 29, so we're a little on the low side, but the external pressure gauge is right at 30. So in a moment we should vent. Once you've vented, then you need to shut the machine down let it cool just a little bit. You're going to pull your max register thermometer out from inside the chamber and verify that it reached the max temperature that your display showed. Disconnect your test equipment and your test gauge and that completes the calibration. Now that the calibration is completed, place the top and back covers on the machine and secure with the original screws. RPI offers free technical assistance on the phone, from a fax, or email. In addition, our website offers a comprehensive e-library of service tips and technical articles, troubleshooting guides, and videos like the one you just saw. For your convenience, we also have a mobile site as well as a shopping cart. Please feel free to contact RPI for any of your technical support needs. Thank you for joining us for our presentation on how to calibrate the adjunct 3 board on Tuttenauer E-Series autoclaves.